with Salt started with a phone call from a curator, Helen Vivian. She saw Ken's work in Venice that was made out of sugar and she was really interested in bringing us to Mildura to look at the issues of salinity and hopefully make a work out of salt. We had a three month residency over there and uh, we uh, saw uh, the beautiful landscape, but there is an issue. It's salinity issues and uh, the salt lake you know, everywhere. Yeah, we decided to produce a new work with uh, salt. So when we were thinking of what to make, um, we thought we could uh, use the products that are made in the area. Uh, lots of grapes, oranges, so we were thinking of different uh, fruit, avocado, and we made a list of all the different fruit and then we realised we were kind of making a list of the still life. So that's when the idea of the still life came about. for us was a, a great medium because it's so much a part of life and also a part of death. It's um, something that we need in order to survive. It's the only thing as well as water that our bodies actually has to have. At the same time, too much of it can kill us and can kill uh, the environment. So um, salt easily for us became a, a wider metaphor for um, food which is, is life, but also toxicity of food. When we were doing the research for The Last Supper, we got this great book on the history of a still life, and obviously one momentous series of paintings is The Allegory of the Five Senses uh, by Rubens and Bruegel, and we were inspired by that series to then also make a kind of five senses mm. but with the idea that what they were depicting in the Renaissance has kind of in a way become an environmental <laughs> disaster in, a, in an Australian context in a way. We do have amazing food and uh, with technology and irrigation we have such a, a luxurious lifestyle mm. but at the same time behind that there is something else for people to imagine when they look at at nothing, <laughs> which is inside the frames. Yeah. We cast Five, over 5,000 yeah, 5, grapes, uh, and into uh, a chandelier. We were interested that originally chandeliers uh, were inspired by the shape of grape bunches in, in Italy, and we were inter interested in the idea of the chandelier as a, a luxury item that also uh, became popular from the Renaissance period on. idea to produce the chandelier out of uranium glass. I uh, wanted to make something respond to uh, Fukushima uh, Daiichi uh, nuclear disasters. Often these days uranium glass is made with depleted uranium which is literally a byproduct of the enrichment process which is needed uh, to turn uranium into, into the substance they use in nuclear power plants. So it literally is like the salt work, it's, um, it's recycling uh, something that is coming out of the environment as a result of a, a process 
so um, of human from human impact. Uh, this materials uh, uh, with UV light, uh, we can visualize uh, uh, the fear. So yeah, we thought it's a good idea to to use that yeah. you know, more more impact. Uh, obviously, the the UV reacts with the uranium glass to make that uh, beautiful uh, green glow. But the green also has those kind of con connotations of uh, radioactivity. So it's a combination of beauty and and fear, which we like to explore in our work. Chandeliers are really connected to the the development and the history of electricity to um, and department stores and hotels from the early 20th century. United States, of and, course, and it's France. Japan, you know, number one. And the second, France, uh, showing the uh, energy main building. France has the highest uh, percentage of its electricity is powered by nuclear power. That's kind of the process we're looking at as well, is our own, like our own hypocrisy <laughs> um, and how to deal with that in an environmental sense. In a purely selfish way, I think our work is just an expression of our own complete paranoias about everything. <laughs> so yeah. rather than kind of telling people what to think, I, I think we're just expressing ourselves and then um, people can just take, take with it whatever they feel like.